Hey guys, it's Robin R. Sally Crafts and welcome to my craft room. I recently had a request to show how I sew the scraps of fabric onto the calculator tape. I do have a video that's about two years old, but I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and do an updated video. I've changed the way I do it just a little bit and it never hurts to go ahead and go over it again and give a refresher. I get questions every week about why I do this and why I don't do that and what's the point of doing this and all that stuff. So I thought we'd have a little fun today and just sew some scraps. Towards the end of the video, there'll be some links up in the iCard, which is usually up in the upper right hand corner of this video. And it'll be different videos on the different types of things that we've been doing with the calculator strips. I'll put up a playlist and stuff like that. And if you don't have this paper or you don't wanna buy the 30 rolls that usually come with it or 10 rolls or whatever, then I have a video on different papers and different options you can do with it. And just other random scrappy calculator paper stuff that's up there. I'm gonna use this roll. This one is two and a quarter. I like, it would be really nice if these rolls came at two and a half. Like I said, although I can make my own strips of paper, it would be nice if they were two and a half since that's what we use in the quilting world. But you could always go ahead and use this. This one's three and a quarter and then just cut it down to two and a half when you trim it up. Yes, you're gonna waste some paper and yes, you're gonna waste some scraps, but these are like the bottom of the barrel scraps, the ones that you maybe a lot of people will throw away and not use, or that they're just gonna sit somewhere in a drawer for a while, or maybe use them for string blocks or something like that. So if you go ahead and use waste a little bit of it off, it'll be okay. You can always use those pieces for something else to use them in a crumb block or to put them in a pillowcase, a stuffed toy, a pin cushion, whatever. A pet bed, I hear that a lot. Now the way I used to do it, as you can see here, is I used to leave the fabric and the paper all left in a roll. I really loved the look of just the paper rolled up with the fabric on it. But I've come to realize for me that sewing on the paper while it's still on the roll gets a little annoying. You can put it in the back of your machine, but you're constantly having to roll it. You can put it in a basket. There's a lot of solutions that you can come up with. But for me, I'm just going to go ahead and take strips of the paper. You can use any length you want. I usually cut mine probably around the 13 to 14, so that way I can have a 12 and a half inch strip for that size block. And I just cut the paper off. Sometimes I will roll it in the opposite direction or, you know, like rub it on the side of a table or something just to get it so it lays a little bit flat and I'm not dealing with it constantly curling up or with the fan blowing it around everywhere. I have realized one day that why bother dealing with having this always rolling and having to move it and it being in my way. It's not too bad if you have a lot of room in the throat of your machine. But I thought, well, while it does look really cool all wrapped up on the paper like this and I enjoy that look, I can easily just go ahead and do it in strips like this. I can chain piece and do one right after the other. Maybe that's what we'll do today. We'll do a little chain piecing just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. And as you can see, my papers aren't even the same length. That's gonna be fine. Because what I can do, if I still want it all rolled up and looking cool, after I sew on all of my strips, I can go ahead and just put my strips together, sew them together like I would a regular piece of fabric for a quilt block, and I'll go ahead and I'll have that long strip anyways. But I find that this is much easier to store. There, we'll save it from the fan. It's much easier to store them in different containers, in bins, in Ziploc baggies, or whatever you're using to store your scraps and fabrics and stuff, to go ahead and just leave it in a short strip like this. Then I can just lay them in the bin. And if I just want to, say today I only want to work on blue fabrics, I can do all different blues on here, and then I won't have to do the entire roll. Like, so if this one roll has blue on it, well, now I can't use that if I want to do a green quilt, right? But if I just cut the strips off, I can do all my different blues. I can do rainbow quilts and I'll just have that paper separated like that. So it'll be a lot easier to do in small bits, small chunks of time and easier to use in my future projects. Now today we are going to go totally scrappy. And let's talk a little bit about basics first. I have my paper. Do I change my needle every time I work on this project? Not really. I have been doing a lot of 
fabric postcards. I've been doing needle books. I've been sewing on random things. Like when I do the fabric postcards, my needle goes through the fabric, the batting, and it goes through a piece of thick cardboard. So I am dulling my needle. I am not doing any major quilts or large, or any types of quilts right now. I'm just mostly playing with scraps and making small projects. So my needle doesn't have to be exceptionally sharp. Going through the constant paper all the time will dull it. This paper is really thin. I can almost see through it when I hold it up to the light and stuff like that. So while it will dull it, it won't be too bad. You can take this needle out, maybe put it in a special little pin cushion where you put any of your dull or used needles. I like to put a small piece of felt in my little needle container where I keep my new needles and I write paper on it so that if I wanna use it for paper piecing over and over again, I can take my nice brand new sharp needle out and put this one in. Right now, I just leave it in because as I said, I'm not doing a quilt. If I were to go ahead and start working on a quilt right now, I would wanna take this needle out and I want a sharp needle. I want a sharp rotary cutter blade and a sharp needle, and I want to have everything, my machine clean. And when I do a quilt, I just start out completely fresh so that I'm not gonna have any stress and problems. Small little projects like this, if I get a little bird's nest of fabric or if my needle gets a little dull, it's little big bits of two and a quarter inch wide strips of scrap fabric. I'm not gonna worry about it. Normally I use whatever's left in any random bobbins I might have, but today I have a spool of brown thread and a brown bobbin to match it. Mostly because I've been using brown as a neutral lately, I have several spools of brown that was given to me, so I'm just going ahead and use those. It works for a lot of these projects. I don't tend to sew with very light colored fabrics and bunches of whites or anything. And if I do have a little bit and the color shows, it's gonna be such a small little spot that I'm not gonna worry about it. So use whatever thread you want, but projects like this are great for using up that last little bit that's on a bobbin. I chose to use a full bobbin today instead of little small scraps of thread because I don't wanna take the time to constantly change it out. I wanna go ahead and kind of make this as smooth as we can today, but that's a great way to use them up. I also don't have too many bobbins right now with only little bits on it. I am using a quarter inch seam. The seam is really insignificant. You just wanna be consistent all the way through. If you're used to using a quarter inch while doing quilts, that's great. You can go ahead and use a three eighths if you want. It's all gonna depend on how wide your fabric is and how wide you want your seam to be. Now, when I put my machine on a quarter inch, it automatically goes to a 2.0 stitch length. And I like that for paper piecing because it's nice and tight and a small stitch. This is really thin paper. I'm not using, you know, like computer paper or anything like that. So this paper tears really easily. And at a 2.0 stitch length, it's gonna go ahead and perforate it and tear it, tear it nicely for me. The other question I get asked a lot is why? Why, Robin? Why are you taking your time and spending all your energy and wasting materials or whatever to sew on paper? Why not just sew your strips one by one? Because I'm a wonky person. I draw wonky lines. I can't draw a straight line. I can't sew a straight line. Anything I do always ends up just a bit wonky and I need to trim it down. If I were to take a whole bunch of two and a half inch strips, let's say rectangles, because a lot of times we're doing rectangles. So if they're like two and a half by four inches and I try to sew them all together to make a piano key border, the border always ends up wavy. Even my starting line where I try to eat, lay everything nice and even, it always ends up a little Cattywonker. So I have to trim that up. Then I had to measure over to my shortest one and I had to trim it there. So where I started out at that four, four and a half inch, you know, um, width or whatever, a lot of times it ends up down to three and a half, three and three quarters. And it now has changed my project. A lot of times I don't go specifically where I need a three inch strip of fabric. I go, hey, this looks good here. I'm going to put it on. I'm a very fluid quilter. I don't follow too many patterns. I just kind of wing it as I go and it, it works for me. So that's my main reason is my borders on both sides. This way I get nice straight edges when I trim it. I flip it over and I trim it right along on the paper. Everything's nice and even. And even with this one, if I want this to be two and a half inches, and it's only two and a quarter. If I make sure that I have extra fabric on either side, I can go ahead and either trim right along this edge and then at two and a half inches, or I can just kind of find a quarter inch, you know. I think for something like this at two and a quarter, I would need what, an eighth of an inch on either side? That it would be a good idea to trim it all the way up straight on this side and then trim this side at whatever length you want. So I can go ahead and have extra fabric hanging over the edge like I usually do, and I can cut this at two and a half inches, and it works out fine that way. 
this is very flexible and fluid. It's just one of those projects that it's for a rainy day when you're in between other projects and you're waiting for your fabric to come for your big Christmas quilt and you just want to sew and not have to think. It's a good project and it does use up some scraps. I have several videos where I show how to tear off the paper. I'll do a quick little demonstration at the end of this video, but it's really easy. You just I'll show you, just hold it and tear it off. I've done it many, many times. It'll also be in the link in the iCard on the videos. So let's go ahead and get started on actually sewing onto this paper. If you have any extra questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I will answer them. And if I need to, you know me, I'll just go ahead and do another video to show you what it looks like. So I have my extra paper to the side. So I'm gonna start sewing here and I'm just gonna keep sewing down this way. I have this bin of random scraps. I wrote on a container, it says thin strips on there, but I've been just putting a little bit of everything. If you want all of your strips to be exact, go ahead and start and make sure you have, maybe take your ruler and make your first line here so everything's all parallel and perpendicular and everything's all right angles. Me, if it gets wonky, I'm okay with wonky. Lay your fabrics down so that they're extra wonky or if you just accidentally a little bit wonky. I don't mind the accidentally a little bit wonky, that kind of works in any project for me. If I go super wonky, then maybe I wanna do it as a piano key border around wonky houses or something like that. As you can see, my strips are extra long. That is not a problem. If you have shorter strips, it works great too. I used to sit and as I was cutting up my scraps, I would make them short enough to go onto my paper strips, but then I realized that's just taking extra time. I can go ahead and trim it as I come here. So like I can put this piece down. I'm gonna lay it right sides up. I can go all the way almost to the end. I just wanna make sure my stitch line is on the paper. I'm gonna leave a little extra at the top. It's looking like about a half an inch there. Leave some extra at the bottom. I can trim it now or trim it later. So let's do a little bit of both. I will trim this one now. Now I'm leaving, I don't know if you could see the paper there. I'm leaving extra on both sides so that if I do want to do a two and a half inch strip, I can go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna slide it down, leave about a quarter inch or so up top, kind of make sure it's sort of almost straight, no big deal, not worrying about it. I'm gonna take this extra bit, now I can either add it into this strip or I'm just gonna set it down on the side on my table and I can add it in later on or make sure I don't use this fabric again. Totally up to you. So here's a fun fabric that I can use over and over. It's got the, like the sugar skulls on it and it has different designs. So as I use this, it's going to be, it'll blend into with everything else because it does have the black and purple little checkers here and stuff. But if I put just this one on, I'm gonna get the skull. If I put this one on, I'm gonna get the flower and the little wiggly line. So it's a great one to use in a variety of places. So I'm going to place these two right sides together. Make sure that I have fabric going past both edges of the paper. I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch seam. I do not back tack at the beginning or end. I'm going to be trimming it off anyways. So whatever stitches are going to be at the edge, it's going to be more into the center. So I can't really back tack unless I'm specifically looking exactly where the paper and a back tack there. I've never had a problem with anything coming apart. And if it does, you can always just restitch the line later on. Remember, this is just one of those no-brainer things that we're just doing just to spend some time with our fabric and in the sewing machine using up some scraps. And even if you don't use this strips of scrappy paper now, well, who knows, maybe two years from now, as it's sitting in a bin, you decide, oh, I've got the perfect, you know, strips of fabric for this project. Now, don't even give me any trouble about saying, oh, Robin, we can't wait two years, because I know many of you have fabric that's in your stash that is much older than two years. And I bet you got some single quilt blocks that you tried out that didn't use sitting in a bin somewhere in your craft room that you haven't used for several years also. Okay, so I trimmed the first one down to the size of my paper, a little past my paper as I was going. Now this one, I've already sewn it, so I can come in here and I can just go ahead and trim it wherever I want. I go ahead and finger press mine. 
If you're going for specifics and you want a certain length and you want everything to be nice and perfect, you might want to have one of those little palm irons next to you at your station here so that you can just go ahead and give it a nice press. If mine overlaps a little and it just folds over and doesn't match the seam perfectly, as I iron it and then sew it into the project, it's all going to work out anyways, plus I'll quilt it. So then I just go back into my bin, see what I got. Oh, let me show you this piece. I have this piece of fabric. I did not trim this down at all because I knew I would just go ahead and use it wherever. It's a little narrower here and then it gets wider here. You can go ahead and use this wider piece. You could trim it down or I can just go ahead and use this piece here. At this point now, your first one was right sides up. Everyone else is going to be right sides down. A little bit of extra fabric on both sides. Trim off that extra, finger press it, and then we're just going to keep going. I'm going to put one more on here, and then we'll go ahead and do the chain piecing. Since I'm in my random strip bin, I never know what size strips I'm going to pull out of here. It could be anything, you know, skinny, fat. Oh, this one has a lot of skinny on it, so the ends are too skinny for what I want to do today. I just want to use something in the center, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Kind of cut it there. Then I can use this piece. Yeah, I could have waited until I put it on here to trim it up, because now I have a little extra that's hanging over the edge. But that'll work for a crumb block later on anyway. Once again, I give it that nice little trim, finger press it, and now let's go ahead and start doing some chain piecing. A lot of times when I'm doing scraps, I like to chain piece in groups of five or 10, just cause, no real reason. You can do, I'm gonna show you how to do just two of them and you can alternate them over and over again, or you can have several strips that you're doing at the same time. And if you're doing a rainbow one, you can do your blue strip and your red strip and your yellow strip. That way you're working on all of your colors at the same time and then everything will basically be done at the same time. Now, because I'm using these long strips, there's gonna be an extra step, but if you had strips that were already about three inches long, it'd be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start my sewing and I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna trim my fabric where I think I need it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch right off the edge there. Now, normally if I'm chain piecing, I already have one, two, three, four, five pieces on. I would have five pieces on this one also, but I don't, so it'll be okay. Since I already have this fabric out, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this at the beginning. Give it a little bit of a trim. I can add in new colors. I can use old fabrics that are already in that one. It doesn't really matter either way. Yes, I am digging through my bin. I say not to dig through, but I see certain things that these aren't sorted all. Like this one has pink flamingos all over it. I would rather put this into a zipper pouch or a, I don't know, maybe a postcard or something. So I am choosing not to put it into my scrappy strip. So yes, I am kind of peeking through a little bit and deciding what I want to use and what I don't want to use. So I have this green fabric. It's even got little cuts taken out of it. It's not even at all. I've got a nice thinner end down here that I'm gonna use. I can put my two pieces together, trim them like that, and then lay them on my paper. Yes, you are gonna use up some extra thread doing this, especially if you're only doing one with all the starting and stopping, but maybe use that neon pink thread that really weird olive green one that you had to buy specially to do a special quilting for someone that wanted it and then you never use it again go ahead and use that in your top thread so if you, you waste a little bit it's not anything you're going to use anyways and it'll be okay or if you're one of those people that started out with the walmart special thread and now you've graduated and moved up into your Aurifil and your Guterman or something that you really enjoy sewing with, you can go ahead and sew these scrappy projects with that. 
you are, yes, you are sewing the fabric together and it can be an issue if you're worried about the quality of the thread. But that thread has gone through many quilts for me when I first started quilting. It's gone through the wash and ironing. Kids drag it around and it's done really well. I think for little quilting scrappy projects like this, I think it'll be okay because you're also gonna go ahead and quilt on top of it, which is going to add extra structure to the project. But whatever works for you, maybe you have one of those spools of thread that has not enough to worry about doing a whole line. Like if you're putting on borders or something, you don't have enough thread left on the spool, go ahead and throw it on here, do a few lines like that and get rid of it. You're not wasting it and it's being used and you know, you're gonna turn it into a project later on. Or you just have to accept the fact that it does use a little bit of thread. Go ahead and I trimmed off that first one that I was working on. I can fold my little strip back. I got threads everywhere. Pick my next fabric. Maybe I want to still use that green because it's kind of fun. Now for these, I would either start quilt it, start sewing it and then trim it, or I'm just going to trim it here so it stays out of my way. And I did not, my needle is still in the down position. I haven't cut my thread or anything like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing on the next one. Now, if there was a third strip for me to just keep going as if I was doing my five or 10 of them at a time, I would just keep going till the end, but I don't have that many. But if I did and I had all of them sewn, I would leave this one on the machine and I would just clip off whatever's up here. And even if this had seven more attached, I can either individually clip them apart or I can just leave them together and just go ahead and sew on my next one. I would just fold this one, add some hearts to it. Whoop, gotta make sure I go past the paper. Trim it off. And then when I get to here, I would take my next piece, I would fold my fabric and give it a little finger press and move on. Now, if you were doing this and you wanted to use your iron at each step, I would do all five or 10 strips, cut my thread, I could take them over and I can individually separate them if it's easier for you to give them a good pressing that way or leave them all connected, whatever works for you. Just like with string blocks, it's about the same theory. I would press them all and then I would come back here. Now when I do string blocks, I do like to do, like I said, in groups and I like to give them a good press with a nice steamy iron. Those I like to lay nice and flat. I don't wanna have any weird bunching or bubblings, but this little stuff, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and sew on these for a little bit and then I will show you how to take the papers off. Now normally I would go ahead and fill this all the way up. I did take it over to my iron. I gave it a good press. I steamed it and everywhere. So if any of these seams were a little bit loose, I wanna make sure everybody's down and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this off because as I said, if I wanted this to be longer, I can just take these two pieces afterwards. I'll show you when and do it. But I wanna show you how I trim it and then we'll go ahead and take the papers off. Now I do trim my strips before I store them away. This side, I'm gonna line it up directly with the paper. Even just a little bit past would be fine. I wanna look here and see that I have fabric all at the two and a half inch. So if I need to go a little bit further over, I can, but I wanna make sure I line that edge of the paper up with these lines on my ruler. So here's a quarter inch past so that I know I can always line it up there and then just trim at two and a half here. I can just add an eighth of an inch there as we talked about before, I just wanna make sure, generally my paper is straight. So I'm gonna to check to make sure it didn't get any wonky ways while I was stitching. I'm gonna trim it off, leaving that eighth of an inch on the side. This for me is total scrap, is gonna go in the scrap bin. I'm not gonna use it, I don't make dog beds. Our, our shelters and stuff here do not like dog beds. They prefer like blankets and 
they don't like them stuffed like that. They don't want any type of pillow. They like they like blankets and maybe old quilts and stuff like that. So then I'm going to line up at two and a half inches because that's what I want for my strip here. I'm lining it up on that little bit of fabric I left on the side of the paper. Otherwise, I would line it up right at the paper. And I can trim off all of this extra. And then I know that I have a two and a half inch strip that I can use like a jelly roll in any project. So any project that calls for a two and a half inch strip that you don't mind it being scrappy like this, you can go ahead and use it. If I were to made this all in blues, I seem to be in a blue mood today. If I made this all in blues and my project called for a two and a half inch jelly roll strip of blue fabric, I can go ahead and use all my scraps. This one's a bit scrappier and crazier the way I like it, so you're not set into one color. Looks like it got a little thread or something there. So that's how that is. Now, normally I would go ahead and take this and I would put it into my bins and I would store it just like that. The paper is not archival. The paper can cause some type of damage to your fabric. If you're concerned about that, you can go ahead and remove the paper and that is perfectly fine. Also, sometimes I do that. It all depends on if I know I'm gonna use it soon or I'm gonna store it for a long time. If I leave this on the paper, there's not gonna be any issues. I can pick it up and I can try it out in different projects. I'm not messing with any type of bias. I'm not stretching any edges. I'm not causing any issues. If you wanna pull that paper out ahead of time, you can always do a stay stitch about an eighth of an inch in on each side and that will help hold your bias in there. I would just be careful handling however you decide to store it. So let's go ahead and take the paper off. Now the paper coming off is, like I said, it's really easy. We used a smaller stitch length, so it perforated the paper. The paper is thin. It's not like scrapbooking paper or anything like that. I can go through if I want. I can fold it on the stitching lines. I can give it a big tug. There's a various ways to do it. I just kind of put my thumb right here by the stitch line, take my left hand, and I just kind of hold. I'm holding really tight with my right hand so that I'm not pulling the thread out. Even though I'm not holding right onto that seam, I'm just close enough that I'm pulling the paper more out of the thread than I am pulling the seams up. Then while holding onto the next seam, I just take my thumb and give it a little pull down, a little tug, and then this will pop right out. I did have a couple stitches left there, so I had to work it. You can fold it over if you want. Get it. Once you get it started, it usually goes pretty easy. This is a good thing to do while you're sitting there watching movies and TV and stuff like that. Listen to an audiobook, give it to the kids to pull apart. If you do paper piecing already, then you're used to having to pull paper out. There you go, and everything is nice and straight. I have a couple pieces, like this one's wider here and narrower there, which makes everybody a little wonky, but it's not crazy wonky. So I think this will work fine in any type of project that I want. I can put it on my fabric postcard, I can turn it into a tote bag, add it to pillows, quilts. Really, like as I said, this is now considered a piece of two and a half inch strip fabric. It's a, it's a part of a jelly roll. Use it anywhere you want to use at two and a half inch strip of fabric. You might not easily be able to cut a square out of it or something, but if you need something that uses a strip, you're good to go. And you can make your strip any width you want. So I hope I answered everyone's questions. If any new ones came up, like I said, please leave them in the comments. I'll go ahead and answer them there. Or if you guys have any answers for people, please go ahead and answer their questions. Oh, let me show you if I was going to sew two pieces together. I do. I do press my fabric from the top, from the non-paper side. Um, just personal preference, since that fabric is the part that I want to be ironed, you can turn it over and press it the other way also if you want. It doesn't really matter too much. Some paper is, some of the cash register papers, it has, they say there's a chemical in it that can damage your fabric, but I really think that's over a long period of time. And if you're using, if that's the only thing you have available and you're using like cash register paper, then just remove your paper right away and just be cautious that you don't have any issues with your seams. So now I can sew these two together as is even with the paper on it. What I would want to do is I would want to make sure both edges are even. And 
then just like sewing anything else together, I would lay them down right sides together. Go ahead and stitch across the end. Let's see if I can do that standing up. Now when I leave the paper in, that's gonna put paper into my seam, which is okay, but then you've gotta pick it out. But what you can also do is on both pieces, you can take this extra piece right here, just fold it back, and that way you're only stitching through the fabric. Do whatever seam allowance you were doing before. I did it. And then you would just go ahead and take this over to your iron and give it a nice pressing. If you were paying attention and all your seams were going in the same direction, that's great. And if not, it doesn't matter. Press it open if you want, either way. And then you can just bring your two pieces of paper back together. Your paper will hold everything or you just have it all loosey-goosey like that. And of course I did stitch mine two together with, with that olivey green there, but that's okay because this is just going to be a scrap piece and when it's in a quilt, it's just gonna look like more of a larger piece than it is two pieces sewn together. So I hope that answered all of your questions. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.